uh, David Relay. David has a long o o association, o association with MIT. Working in the Cancer Center, David obtained his PhD degree from MIT in 1981. And after a short postdoc, David returned uh, uh, to the Cancer Center, uh, returned to the Cancer Center as, a, as, an, as, an, as an, an assistant professor in 1983, and, and, then, and then moved up through the ranks. So today is a special uh, uh, pleasure to w w welcome David and some of his former lab members back for the for the for the for the Koch Institute reunion symposium. So currently, David uh, David is professor at, uh, at UC Berkeley. So David is widely known for his pioneering work in uh, in uh, natural killer cell recognition and uh, and function. In particular, his early work provided definitive evidence supporting the, the missing self principle of natural, natural killer cell recognition. And more recently, David discovered that DNA damage induced expression of ligand on tumor cells that will activate natural killer cells to, natural killer cells to, to kill them. And thus linking the tumor immunosurveillance surveillance with a DNA damage response. So today, David will speak on recognition of cancer cells by natural killer cells. David. Thank you, Shanzu. It's, it's really great to be, to be here. Um, I had many uh, great times uh, during my, both my graduate uh, times at MIT and as, and as a faculty member here, the Cancer Center was really a formative uh, place for me, and I have uh, many fond memories of it. I know we're not supposed to do uh, much reminiscing. I did want to show um, a couple of slides uh, of the different labs I was in. This is the Mike Bevan lab. Uh, I noticed, apparently, we didn't take many pictures back in those days, because I honestly couldn't find very many, but uh, that's, that's Mike in about 1978. Uh, Tom Hunig is here. He was a postdoc in the lab. Pam Fink was a student. And I couldn't find an old picture of uh, uh, Ned. It's a more recent one. He later switched labs to the, to the Baltimore lab where he, he did his PhD. And then later, uh, as, a, as a faculty member, I could only find, again, not pictures of everyone. These are a few members of my lab from, from the MIT uh, Cancer Center days. Uh, I think a, a few of them are here today, uh, in, including uh, Mark Biggs and uh, James and uh, Richard Garman and Matt Holstein and some other people. And so it's great to be back. So um, what I'd like to do today is, is talk about how um, cancer cells are recognized by natural killer cells. We think this is a, an innate uh, form of, of tumor surveillance. And uh, my work with NK cells actually began when I was a, a faculty member at MIT um, uh, and, and was really spawned by a, a collaborative project with Rudy Yanish's lab, which I'm not going to talk about today. <clears throat> but um, let me introduce them to you, since uh, many of you may not know much about them. They, they are indeed innate lymphocytes. They're lymphocytes, but they're, they're, um, they're part of the innate immune system. They, they do not have uh, rearranging receptor genes. They were discovered as cells that kill tumor cell lines, but they also play a role in infectious disease and in viral infections and in uh, cyto and, uh, uh, intracellular pathogen uh, infections. They're cytotoxic cells that also produce uh, interferon gamma and, and tumor necrosis factor, and hence they uh, promote inflammation. Uh, they tend to be early responders and provide early protection and shape later adaptive immune responses mediated by T cells and B cells. And their recognition is mediated by numerous co-expressed stimulatory and inhibitory receptors. So instead of, being, of having a unitary uh, receptor like the T cell and B cell receptors, these cells use multiple different receptors. And uh, this picture is meant to summarize uh, the notion that there's actually two different classes of receptors, those that stimulate and those that inhibit, that play a key role in NK recognition. And uh, even normal cells express both types of ligands, but they, they tend to cancel out, and so normal cells are protected. But if either the uh, stimulatory or inhibitory uh, ligands change on a target cell, the balance can be shifted towards recognition and then uh, lysis of the target cell. So for what I'll be focusing on today are instances where stimulatory ligands, ligands are upregulated on, on cancer cells, leading to NK recognition and destruction. 
Um, so the receptor I'd like to focus on today is one that we've been working on for about 10 years in the lab. Uh, the, in, at the beginning of these studies, the uh, role of uh, the mechanism whereby NK cells recognize tumor cells was still very poorly understood. And in particular, uh, the receptors that stimulate them were, were basically unknown. And we and a few other labs took an interest in this uh, orphan receptor at the time uh, because it had certain features that suggested it might be an activating receptor and have an important role in NK cells. And uh, the receptor is uh, mediates signaling by interaction with signaling adapter molecules here, induces cytotoxicity and cytokine production. And I'll mention it's also expressed by various types of T cells where it can modulate their functions as well. I, I won't talk about that today. Uh, so we and, and a few other labs, the Spies Lab and Lanier Lab, uh, used uh, soluble forms of the receptor to identify ligands for NKG2D, and we're surprised to find that there were really quite a large number of them. And they're all, they were all uh, MHC class one relatives. They're all normal uh, self genes. Uh, these are the mouse uh, ligands, and each individual mouse uh, may have up to five or 10 of these that that can be expressed. And there's a similar number in humans in homologous families that are called the ULBP or MCA, MCB uh, subfamilies. And they have a similar function. Uh, these cells, the, these ligands are expressed in diseased or stressed cells, but not in most normal cells. And therein lies their great interest because they seem to mark uh, diseased cells that NK cells will then attack. Uh, in cancer cells, or including primary cancers and also tumor cell lines, one sees that one or more of these ligands are typically upregulated in, in these cells. So seeing as NKG2D is a major tumor-specific receptor on NK cells, uh, we asked the role, what is the role of, of NKG2D in tumor surveillance in vivo, and what's the lo logic of tumor cell recognition by NKG2D? So um, the original experiments uh, we did involved uh, looking at actually fairly rare tumor cells that don't express any of these ligands that I mentioned, which like the B16 melanoma cell line, which grows very uh, rapidly in syngenetic mice and will eventually uh, will kill these mice very rapidly. This is a melanoma cell line. And if you introduced into them uh, what, any of these ligands, uh, they then became incapable of forming tumors. And you could show in subsequent experiments that the rejection of these transfected tumor cells was mediated by NK cells and in some cases by uh, T cells. So this suggested that uh, these indeed could serve as a, a mechanism for immune surveillance. But to address this in greater detail, uh, Nadia Guerra, a postdoc in the lab, undertook to knock out the gene for the NKG2D receptor in order to test its role in a more in vivo environment. <clears throat> so she generated NKG2D knockout mice. And uh, we used these mice to cross them to various models of uh, mouse cancer. In particular, uh, the ones I'll show you are the uh, uh, a TRAMP model. This is the uh, a transgenic model of adenocarcinoma of the prostate, uh, in which the SP40T antigen is expressed exclusively in the prostate, and all the mice eventually develop prostate uh, cancer. <clears throat> and I'll also show you data in a moment from the emu MIC model of lymphogenesis, lymphomagenesis. So in, in, the, uh, in the TRAMP model, it, mice that express NKG2D normally generally develop late, relatively late tumors shown here that are, that are big, but, but still relatively small. But in a small fraction of cases, you see this very aggressive early form of cancer that arises in an earlier time and, is, and, and, and results in very massive tumors. These are you know, 5 to 10 gram tumors in some cases, uh, which is you know, a pretty significant fraction of the body weight of the animal. And these all have very aggressive uh, histology uh, patterns indicating massive uh, cancer. <clears throat> and what we found when we, when we compared to this to litter mates that lacked the NKG2D receptor was that this early aggressive form of cancer was substantially more frequent uh, in, in these mice. And, that, and, and, and all of those tumors had this very uh, uh, malignant, uh, uh, poorly differentiated uh, histopathology pattern. Now, interest, so, so that suggests that a role of NKG2D in repressing uh, uh, cancer in the wild type mice. And analysis of the tumors uh, provided additional evidence for that because when we asked whether the tumors expressed NKG2D ligands on their surface, and in particular I'll talk about one called Ray1, which you'll hear a lot about in for the rest of the talk, we found that the tumors that arose in the, in the wild type mice 
generally uh, lacked Ray1 expression, whereas all the tumors that arose in the mutant mice uh, ex ex expressed uh, Ray1 and actually other NKG2 D ligands as well. And so these data suggest that the immune system is selecting for Ray1 deficient tumor cells, another evidence for its role in, in surveillance of these tumors.